Hey again, welcome back to our read alouds. It's Mr. Lone. I'm excited to uh, join you again. Um, for today's Wednesday's read aloud, I decided to go with something that was leaning a little bit toward a Halloween theme because we are getting to that day. I know my kids are excited. They've got their costumes ready. My wife and I have ours ready. A little family theme thing again. You'll, maybe you'll see uh, what it is if I see you out in town. Um, I'm going to do a story today by, a, by the author Amanda Knoll. It is called How I Met my monster. And away we go. One night, when I reached under the bed for my truck, I found this note instead. Monsters, meet here for the final test. Ha! My parents were obviously trying to trick me into staying in bed. I didn't believe in monsters. So, I crumpled up the paper grabbed my truck, and zipped over to the garage. I heard some creaking and rumbling, but I wasn't scared. Our house always made noises at night. But then a voice under the bed scolded. Stop that stomach rumbling. The child will hear you. Voices? Stomach rumbling? If this was part of my parents' trick, it was pretty cool. I peered into the inky blackness, and five pairs of eyes blinked back. See, now he knows we're here, the voice sighed. One of you has broken monster rule number one. Maintain the element of surprise. This is no trick, I thought. There are monsters under my bed. A long-necked yellow monster slid out, followed by four little monsters. Rule number two, the yellow one instructed. Never block the bed. All of you, scoot over. Hey, I realized, that one must be the teacher. I sat up straight, mesmerized by the monster parade shuffling across my bedroom. That's better, the teacher monster said. Access to the bed is clear. Now, who knows rule number three? The purple monster teetered on his tiptoes and gurgled. Get the child into bed. That's correct, Genghis. And how would you do that? Well, Mr. Z, I would roar my scariest roar. All right, give it a go. Genghis took a deep breath opened his mouth, and let out a tiny blurp. Stomach rumbling would have a better chance of getting me in the bed than that funny little noise. The child is right, said Mr. Z, shaking his head. That was not sufficiently scary. Genghis, I'm sorry. You're just not the best monster for this child. There was some creaking as Genghis slunk beneath the bed. Before I could investigate where Genghis had gone, Mr. Z asked, Now, who wants to try to get the child in bed? The orange monster looked at the ceiling and the red monster looked at the floor. Only the green one looked at me. First, he stared at my toes and started drooling. And then he took a step toward me and I heard that rumbling noise again. I sprang into bed so he couldn't get my feet. Mr. Z blinked. Very unconventional, Gabe. Your stomach gurgles seem to be what this child needs. What I needed was to make sure this little Gabe monster didn't eat my toes. Right, you three. The child's in bed, said Mr. Z. As every monster knows, the ultimate object objective is rule four. Who can tell me what that is? The orange monster bounced and squeaked. Keep the child in bed until it falls asleep. Correct, Morgan. And how would you accomplish that? Shadow puppets. Shadow puppets, she squeaked again. Gabe whistled through his nose and I snickered, but Mr. Z said, interesting. Try it. Morgan hopped on my night table and flailed her arms near my lamp. Silly shadows blobbed onto the wall, and a cloud of fluffy fur tickled my nose. Uh, 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 chew! Morgan, stop at once, Mr. Z ordered. You're supposed to scare him, not make him sneeze. I'm sorry, you are not a match for this child either. Morgan's arms flopped to her sides and she scuttled under my bed. There was some more creaking, and Morgan was gone. After all that sneezing, I really did need a tissue. Suddenly, a huge shadow of uncut claws loomed across my room. Awesome, I thought, and kind of scary. I froze in place. Powerful performance, Gabe, said Mr. Z. But do either of you see a problem? Ooh, I know, chirped the red monster. The child's out of bed again. Correct, Mr. Z continued. And one of you must get him back in. Back to rule number one. Maintain the element of surprise. All at once, poof, the monsters vanished. And then I heard more rumbling. Were they hiding in the closet? 
making noises to scare me? <laughs> no, that was just my stomach rumbling. All this excitement was making me hungry. I tiptoed past the closet and peeked out the door. So far, so good. No monsters. Then I stepped over the squeaky stair and sneaked down to the kitchen. As I reached into the pantry, I heard some chattering behind me. I sure hoped it wasn't that toe-loving Gabe. I yanked open the fridge. Ha! Ah, it wasn't Gabe. It was just the red monster, who was shivering on the shelf. Found you! I laughed. Nice try, Abigail, said Mr. Z. This is just not working. You are not the right monster for this child. But Mr. Z, she whined. It's not my fault he's scared of, not scared of me. I'm sorry, Abigail. Let's go. Abigail chomped, clomped behind Mr. Z. When I heard the creaking, I knew she was gone. I grabbed some crackers and headed upstairs, wondering if Gabe was gone too. I munched all the way down the hall, then went into the bathroom and brushed my teeth again. When I opened the door a minute later, Gabe was definitely not gone. He was right there, and he was huge. I charged into my room, slammed the door, leaped into bed, and that's when I knew whew, my toes were safe. I was surprised to hear breathing under my bed, ragged breathing, and a stomach rumbling. Hey, kid, Gabe growled. Good to see you. I pulled my covers up tight. <clears throat> now, if you don't mind, I'd like to start the evening with an ominous puddle of drool. I peeked over the edge of the bed and green ooze spread from underneath. Then the bed quivered as Gabe unfurled his spiked tail. Well, this looks pr quite promising, Mr. Z noted. When I heard some more creaking, I knew Mr. Z was gone, and I was alone with Gabe. Gabe loomed over my bed and began sharpening his uncut claws on the bedpost. <clears throat> How do you get so big? I gasped. Rule number five, my friend, he explained. People food makes monsters grow, so thanks for the crackers. Got any toes I can munch? I scrunched in my feet so Gabe couldn't get them. This was way better than playing with trucks. No toes tonight, but you can have this, I offered, tossing a stuffed monster off the bed. Gabe dove for it. His soft, comforting snorts filled the room as he snuffled the toy. I shivered. Kid, I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. No other monster can scare me like you, I giggled. Gabe was the monster for me. His snorts and his ooze were perfect. I yawned and shivered again, and I was asleep in no time. All right, McGinn, I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, as we get closer to Halloween, we'll have a couple more monster-like stories in the next few days. You have an awesome night, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.